Welcome to Literary Insights. This is the summary of the book Show Your Work. Austin Cleon. If you like this content, please consider subscribing and liking this video. There is a myth of the lone genius, the idea that creativity comes from individuals working in isolation. In reality, creativity is often collaborative and seniors, defined as an ecology of talent by Brian Eno. Online communities make it easy to join a scene. Anyone can contribute and share ideas. Amateurs or enthusiasts who pursue work out of love often have advantages over professionals. They experiment freely, learn in public, and are willing to try new things and make mistakes. Their beginner's mindset leads to more possibilities. Mediocre but sincere creative acts are better than doing nothing. Amateurs are lifelong learners who think deeply about topics and share what they're learning. Amateurs sometimes have more to teach than experts. They recently encountered difficulties and haven't forgotten how to explain them. Watching amateurs at work can inspire others to get involved. People prefer imperfect but authentic works to overly polished fare. Audiences connect more with amateurs who seem like real people than aloof professionals. Typically, artists are trained to keep their creative process private and only share the finished work. But in today's digital world, artists can choose to share as much or as little of their process as they want by using social media and the internet. Sharing one's artistic process, the work that matters to the artist, can help form a strong connection with an audience. However, for many artists, especially those who grew up before the digital age, sharing their process openly can be scary. Quoting Edgar Allan Poe, most writers, poets and special, prefer having it understood that they compose by a species of fine frenzy, an ecstatic intuition, and would positively shudder at letting the public take a peep behind the scenes. But as Dan Provost and Tom Gerhard write, people do want to see how the sausage gets made. Audiences are interested in the human beings behind the work and what they do. Sharing one's work and process as an amateur or artist in today's world is key. As Michael Jackson said, a lot of people are so used to just seeing the outcome of work. They never see the side of the work you go through to produce the outcome. Showing the work behind the work can help connect with an audience. Sharing your work consistently allows you to build relationships with your audience. It shows the human side of your work and allows the audience to feel connected to the creative process. In 2013, astronaut Chris Hadfield gained popularity by sharing the day-to-day -day aspects of his mission on social media. This allowed people to connect with the human side of space travel. Even if you don't have a tangible end product, you can share your process by documenting it through journals, photos, videos, etc. This helps you see your progress and gives you material to share with others. Focus on sharing a little bit each day. Don't worry about the big picture. Just share one small part of your process each day. Share on social media platforms where your target audience spends time. Be an early adopter of new platforms, but don't be afraid to abandon ones that don't work. Share imperfect work and get feedback. Not everything you share will be great, but share it anyway. You can't always tell what will resonate with your audience. Be careful what you share since anything on the internet becomes public. Share openly, but not everything. Maintain some privacy. There's a difference between sharing and oversharing. Ask yourself so what to make sure what you're sharing has value to others. Share generously to help or entertain others, not just talk about yourself. Build connections and relationships through sharing. Collecting and curating things you love can feed your creativity. Your tastes shape who you are and influence your work. Before you share your work, share what you love, your influences, favorites, and what inspires you. Your tastes reveal a lot about you. Don't feel guilty about your pleasures or influences. Like what you like. Look for treasure in the trash. Find value in what others discard or ignore. As an artist, be willing to dig through cultural debris for inspiration. A collection doesn't have to have a unified theme to be meaningful. Collect what speaks to you, like Nelson Molina's Trash Museum. Share your collection and tastes to give people insight into who you are, even more than sharing your work. Your influences shape your work. 
More than 400 years ago, Michel de Montaigne wrote that ordinary, familiar things can be the grandest miracles if we see them in the right light. We all love things that others dismiss as garbage. Have the courage to love what you love, even if others don't understand it. Share your tastes honestly. Don't worry about being cool or hip. Connecting with like-minded people is most important. When sharing the work of others, properly credit and link to the creators. It's the right thing to do and helps others discover more great work. A wealthy art collector discovers two identical paintings of a harbor. One is an original masterpiece, the other a recent forgery. Our perception of art depends heavily on its story and attribution. Stories have a huge effect on how we value things. Words matter. Tell good stories about your work to help others understand and connect with it. A good story has a clear structure. Study story structures, then steal them and fill in the details with elements from your own life and work. Most stories follow a simple plot. A character wants something, overcomes obstacles to get it, and wins, loses, or draws in the end. This also reflects the shape of most creative work. Life is like an unfinished story. We don't know how far into it we are or how it will end. But there are ways to tell open-ended stories by focusing on the present and an unknown future. Every pitch, essay, cover letter, etc. is an unfinished story. A good pitch has three acts, the past, the present, and the future. The past is where you've been and what you want. The present is where you are now and how you're using up resources. The future is where you're going and how the audience can help. This turns the audience into the hero who determines the ending. Keep your audience in mind when telling stories. Speak plainly. Be concise. Learn to communicate well through speaking and writing. Use proper grammar and spelling. Effective storytelling is a skill that takes practice. Study great stories and find your own stories to tell. Your stories will improve the more you tell them. When asked what do you do, avoid awkwardness by honestly and humbly explaining your work. Explain it simply. Have empathy for the audience. Anticipate questions and answer them patiently. Bios should be simple and concise, without adjectives or bragging. State the facts. Unless you're exceptional, don't call yourself a ninja, guru, or rock star. Sharing knowledge freely is valuable. Teaching others does not necessarily create competition and can add value. Studying the work of masters does not mean you can readily replicate their results. Think about what you can teach others from your process and work. Share techniques, tools, materials, reading lists, tutorials, and your step-by-step -step process. Make people better at things they want to improve. Teaching others generates interest in your work and gives you valuable feedback. Putting knowledge into the world provides an ongoing education. To be a good writer, you must first be an avid reader. Writers who don't read much deserve the rejections they'll inevitably receive. Read the publications you want to be published in. Meet your online friends in person. There's no substitute for face-to-face -face interaction. Meeting online friends in person, IRL, is great because there's no small talk. You already know each other. You can dive into deeper conversations. Attend or organize meetups where online communities get together in person. These are less stressful than typical networking events because you already know and follow many of the people. Don't just meet online friends in big groups. Meet one-on-one -on -one for coffee, lunch, or another casual get-together. Ask them to show you around places that are meaningful to them like a favorite art museum, bookstore, or restaurant. Meeting online friends in person leads to more authentic relationships and collaboration. While online interaction is great, face-to-face -face is still vital. Meeting people online and turning those connections into real-life friendships is rewarding. While browsing social media and chatting with others online is fun, grabbing coffee together in person can lead to even stronger bonds. Learning to take criticism and not take it personally is an invaluable skill. Putting your work out into the world inevitably leads to both praise and criticism. Prepare for and accept whatever feedback comes. 
Stay calm, strengthen your confidence, roll with the punches, protect your vulnerabilities, and maintain balance in your life. Consider the source of feedback and criticism. Pay the most attention to those who care about you and your work. Dismiss trolls who only want to provoke and upset you. You do not need to engage with them. Don't be afraid to make money from your work. Everyone has bills to pay, so find ways to generate income from what you do, whether that's a day job, selling your work, crowdfunding, or other means. Having financial success does not make you a sellout. Celebrate the success of others rather than being jealous. Build your audience by sharing your work freely, cultivating relationships, and being open about your creative process. Once you have dedicated fans and followers, consider asking them to become patrons through donations, crowdfunding, or purchasing your work. Make sure you are charging a fair price for work you believe in. Always collect email addresses from those interested in your work. Email is a simple but enduring way to stay in touch with your audience and share updates, offers, and announcements. Email is a powerful tool for communication and marketing despite its flaws. Build an email list by offering value to subscribers and treat them with respect. Don't worry about selling out. Take opportunities that allow you to do the kind of work you want to do. Say no to opportunities that would compromise your work. Help others who have helped you along the way. Be generous but set boundaries so you can still focus on your work. Careers have ups and downs. Don't quit prematurely. Success is often a matter of perseverance and luck. You can't plan everything. Just keep working steadily without high expectations. Past success or failure is no guarantee of future results. Each project starts from scratch. To avoid stalling, use the momentum from finishing one project to launch into the next, a technique called chain smoking. Taking periodic sabbaticals can recharge your creativity and inspire new ideas. Stefan Sagmeister swears by taking a year off every seven years. Two other tips, play till the final inning. And whatever happens, don't quit. Finding work again can be very difficult. The author discusses the benefits of taking periodic breaks or sabbaticals from your work to recharge and renew your inspiration. He cites designer Stefan Sagmeister who takes a full year off every seven years. While most people can't take such extended breaks, the author suggests some shorter practical sabbaticals. Use your commute time to disconnect from work. Read, write, and gaze out the window. Exercise is a way to relax your mind and gain new insights. Walking a dog forces you to take a daily break. Spend time outside in nature. Completely unplug from electronics. It's important to separate your work life from the rest of your life. As the author's wife says, if you never go to work, you never get to leave work. Quotes from Robert Mitchum and Milton Glaser reinforce the benefits of periodically walking away from your work. The author argues that you have to push yourself beyond mastery by abandoning old work and skills and learning new things. Louis C.K. rewrote his comedy act each year, digging deeper into personal topics. Director Steven Soderbergh planned to tear down everything he's done and start over. The key is not starting over but beginning again, going back to the basics, becoming an amateur, and learning in public. Constantly creating and sharing new work prevents stagnation. In summary, the key points are Take periodic breaks from your work to recharge. Use short practical sabbaticals. Separate your work life from the rest of your life. Leave work when you're off. Move beyond mastery. Abandon old work and skills. Learn new things. Don't start over, but begin again. Go back to basics. Become an amateur. Constantly create and share new work. Prevent stagnation.